Thanks. Uh, Deb, let us know when you're ready. Okay. Ready? Okay. Might as well get started, huh? Yes. All right. Uh, the time is 7.01. This is Wednesday, July 14th. And the Wiggins, uh, Town of Wiggins work session is uh, in session at this time. We'll, we'll call the meeting to order. So the first meeting agenda item for the work session is a discussion regarding Independence Day celebration and future events. Tom? Right. Yeah. Um, I think we would all agree that we had a uh, successful event. Um, I hear uh, from Bo, 115 parade entrance, which he was shooting for 100, so he went past that. We did learn one downside, we need to expand the parade route. <laughs> and we need to start it about a half hour earlier if we're gonna be that large again. But, the unofficial theme was bringing the community back together, you know, along with celebrating Independence Day. And I think that occurred. I think there are a lot of people that folks hadn't seen for quite a while at town events. So I think that was good. And uh, I applaud Bo's effort to bring people back to the parade. Um, I was at the Business Alliance meeting on uh, uh, Tuesday and had good comments. And uh, so I thought it went really well. Staff had a debrief. We've identified some areas where we need to continue to improve. Uh, planning is one and adding some structure, but given we pulled it off in about three weeks, um, we think it went pretty good. There was what I like to call organized chaos behind the scene, but the public didn't see it. So, um, so there are things that we're already starting to plan for next year, assuming it gets put in the budget. Uh, for example, making sure we've got a fireworks shooter lined up, make sure we've got the band lined up and to do as much pre-work that we can um, starting in February of 2022, if not now, with some of the items. Um, I've heard, and Bo and I have talked about, uh, in the past, there used to be a harvest festival of some sort, Oktoberfest, and have heard some interest in that, and really no action needed by the board, but Curious if you would support that as a board if we uh, could plan a probably October-ish Harvest Fest. We want to coordinate it so that um, the rural community, the farmers around us can participate. We want to make sure it's after their busy time. Um, Bo has told me about um, sections of the community that would cook traditional dishes and things of that nature, you know, German and Italian, uh, just have a good celebration. So we're trying to work with that as well. So if I think Brush has one. I know Sterling yeah. has one. So we're trying to um, not compete with anyone else's. So I've asked staff and and also you as the board, if you know of any events in September, October, even early November, send me the dates so that we can start looking at a big calendar on when we could maybe pull an event off. Um, just for reference, most of the events that will be taking place will be in the last few weeks of September. Okay. So we're really looking at October, probably being right. how to do it. The only thing we want to be careful of is uh, is homecoming for Wiggins. Although in some aspects, homecoming weekend might not be a bad idea well, either. Homecoming is not a problem this year because it's in September. Okay. And it's been set because there have been some talk of, of coordinating it with homecoming. Yeah. But they had to set their schedule um, probably a few weeks ago and it's set. 
So I did ask uh, Trent about that. So, but maybe in the future, it could be worked together. Uh, so, but if you know any events, send them to us and we're probably gonna start putting it, putting a calendar together. I'm giving Bo a rest from parades for a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. So, but if the board is in agreement, we are thinking about moving forward with that. And then also starting to think about Christmas, even though it's July. <laughs> yeah, I think like Bruce said, uh, Brush always has a big October okay. fest. So just make sure we don't coincide with right. that. But yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't seen any event past the weekend of September 27th, 28th, yeah. including Brush, the Fort Morgan Harvest Car Show, uh, Sugar Beet Days. Yeah. Um, so all of those events, it looks like we're good for October. The only thing that's going to be interesting is Pope's does their yearly right. run in October. We want to talk but, with them as well. But one day, not a big deal. Well, yeah. So um, any constructive comments about the fourth that you would like to share with me and I can share with staff? It was just just that half hour earlier. That's the only negative thing I heard about the whole thing. It's just a half, half hour. Yeah. And we'll, we'll make sure we decorate. Well, the we didn't know that we was going to have 115. Yeah. And <laughs> we'll make sure we'll decorate your float and have candy. Bags <laughs> well. I think the only other thing I heard was, um, and I, I know when we, we had to play on the fly and then we moved it to the fourth about three weeks in advance. And I think that hurt us from a vendor standpoint. Uh, I heard some people kind of gripe about not enough food options, things like that, or not enough other vendors. And I think that's just a, we're just a victim of circumstance. Um, we'll need to make sure next year that we get not just verbal commitments, but really get people signed up, have everything secure early and we won't run into that again. Right. But even that, it wasn't even really a complaint. It was more so just an observation. I, I, the games that we had set up, the dunk tank, the, the water stuff, and people were back out in the water after it rained. So it's like, and they hung out in the rain. So overall, I very minor stuff. This was good. I, I thought the band sounded excellent. Were good. We're going to invite them back again. They've got a huge library. Uh, one thing we learned just one round of the voice of Wiggins. That sounds good. And, uh, <laughs> and one of our self comments was make the dunk take more front and center. Um, and really plan that. But, you know, with more time and a little bit more organization, we can line up the volunteers differently and really try to do things. This is the first year this team did this event. Um, and I think, uh, they did very well. And even though they've been involved in the past, like Bo and Joanne and Hope and everyone, we actually, they actually did it on the ground this year. And I think they did a great job. Yeah, I do too. Um, fireworks at night. I know we had very minor complaints about that this year. Um, I was told about a article in the Fort Morgan Times today uh, about Morgan County as a whole in fireworks this year. And I think our few issues were small compared to the rest of the county. So we're doing something right. Um, I've had one comment passed to me by Pat about some late night fireworks in uh, I relayed that to the chief and we're talking about how we can be more proactive about that next year. But he was pleased because we had very few, if no complaints about fireworks leading up to the fourth. Um, we had a lot of displays on the fourth. <laughs> quite a few. Before quite and, quite a few. and after our show. <laughs> And he had uh, he checked with dispatch each year. We just had one complaint voice and turned in and called in. Um, I think we'll spread the word next year to encourage people if they do 
see the fireworks. Uh, and if they're causing issues, especially if it's dry, to go ahead and call dispatch so we have a record of it. Um, the officers were tied up on some other calls so they couldn't respond to the one complaint we had and, uh, because they were tied up otherwise. But overall, the chief was happy with how things um, unfolded the week before and the day of the fireworks. Awesome. Right. Any other comments from the board? Kyle uh, Park has some good ones. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were launching before we did. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember watching from the park, and I was pretty sure a few people in Kyle Park probably launched their fireworks before ours. It kind of threw me off because like wondering what well, this isn't the start time, um, but it did work out well. Fireworks show was really nice. They, it was awesome, including the 500 others that happened right at the end of ours. <laughs> so, and last night, and, <laughs> and last night. definitely the season. All right, if nothing else, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tom, and a huge thank you to just get it on record to Bo and any everyone who volunteered. It was really cool to see Wiggins United for a day. Yeah, I would agree with David that it was it was really cool to see everybody just come together to work together to a mission to to be able to make a celebration worthwhile. Yeah. You know, that we all care about this community. We care about what the purpose is of it and that we're going to move forward together. And I just want to bring up, David, thanks for, uh, you know, the trail dedication up there, you know, 1 p.m. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that was really uh, special to that family. So thanks for doing that. It's special to do it. Uh, for that family and just the stake they've had in the community for yeah. so long. And uh, you can tell by the family members and the people that were not family members that knew the Forche family altogether, just how important Phyllis was right. uh, to this community. And we're forever in debt to Phyllis for what she's done. Good. And I think it's amazing that we have that plaque there. I know it's going to move eventually and we're going to have an overlook eventually. And Phyllis would be proud of what we're doing. I want to give a, call out to some of the supporters that we had because we couldn't have done it without them. Um, Bezler Homes, of course, uh, Daryl Ricks, Ed Cook, Empire Dairy, and Norm Dennis were a huge help. Um, Morgan County Economic Development was on site and helped us with some of the um, glow sticks, Hope Farms, Two Valley Builders and Walker Repair Service. And then in the packet, I listed all the volunteers. And I really want to thank Mark and David for their help as well. You're welcome. Sure. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, great. All right. So uh, the second agenda item for tonight is a presentation and recommendation on bid results for the BNSF sewer line replacement project. Excited about hearing this one. Great, thanks. In the packet, I included a brief write-up um, and the uh, tabulation of the two bids that we that we uh, received. As you note, noted in the packet uh, material, we had sent it out to several uh, firms asking them to bid. Um, Joss with uh, NOCO Engineering also uh, listed in the Dodge Plan Room, which goes nationwide. And he also talked to about 15 other contractors that expressed some interest in it. Um, in the end, we just got two bids, but given how busy folks are, we were happy with the two bids and there were two bids that were competitive and uh, from uh, good firms that are reputable and uh, Joss has worked with them before. They both can do good work. Um, I'm familiar with Darren's, with NAB Excavating's work. Um, don't know much about Goff Gopher, but uh, Josh has been pleased with them in the past. They were the low bid. Um, I think the biggest difference is they can do the boring themselves. That's the whole difference. Just, I talked to Darren about it. He just delivered me some rock yesterday. Yeah. And he and he said that those guys are legit and we'll get a good job. Right. So 
Uh, I'm recommending um, at the next meeting, I'll have a formal resolution, but allow me to uh, give them the notice of award and then sign the contract documents when we get them ready. We anticipate the work will likely be done later in the fall. They want to make sure they get all their uh, materials in. So once they get started, they can just keep going. It's a relatively small project from a contractor standpoint. So I think they want to get on the site, do the work and get off the site. Well, I think we, we talked about this three years ago, we've been working on this. And at that time, it was $350,000 that they was looking at. And we get a bid for two ninety two. That is pretty darn good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy that we're moving forward with that and uh, we'll get it complete this year, hopefully, and on time and uh, within budget. That's good. Cool. Any questions from the board? I, this is cool. I, I was really excited to see this in the agenda and on the agenda because, yeah, Bruce, long time coming. Long time. Long time coming. So looking forward to getting that actually uh, rolling. It's going to do us a lot of favors in terms of how uh, things are handled right here. <laughs> so excited about that. Cool. Well, and like you said, nice, nice being quite a bit under the budget too because yeah. with anything in construction, there's always associated costs a lot of times that come well, you know you run you know that you don't yeah. expect, so, uh, gives us a little fluff too in case guess this that happens, so, you know. i will say it's with the dola grant um if since we'll reduce the budget it's a reimbursable grant so our percentages will stay the same so we may we'll have to spend about the same amount of money they'll give us the grant for about the same amount but it won't be, oh, we get to spend their 155 first and then spend ours. Does unfortunately it doesn't work that way. All right, we, we can move on to the next one, which is agenda item number three for tonight. This is a discussion regarding the town of Wiggins preserving second amendment rights. Okay, I'll be uh, taking the reins on that one again. Um, in your packet, I provided you a draft resolution. Um, we are one of, if we continue down this path and you as a board approve the resolution, we'll be one of six in the state of Colorado that have publicly um, come out in support of Second Amendment rights and opposing House Bill 191177. Um, as you notice in the packet, I included the uh, resolutions that I was able to get a hold of. Uh, CML helped me with that, and so did um, uh, Melinda. And um, I patterned ours or the draft off of Commerce Cities. It seemed to be reasonable. Uh, not leaning one way or the other too much, but I have heard comments from um, board members uh, about do we want to make one of the sections at the end of the uh, resolution a little bit stronger about House Bill 1177. And I'm going to leave, leave that up to the board's discretion, but I have highlighted one of the other um, resolutions of a section that we could borrow. Um, I do, I'm of the school of why reinvent the wheel, just take something that seemed to have worked and tweak it to fit us. So with that, I'll answer any questions or we can have a great discussion. I got one question. Will this affect, will, will this affect any way that uh, us getting funds, grants, will the state turn us down on grants or something because we're that's the only that i think it's a great idea i honestly do but that is one thing that i was concerned about i'm i can't say never or it absolutely won't but it shouldn't um i know it's not as strong but 
what we're doing is more symbolic than having a lot of teeth. We can't rewrite the constitution or state law, but we come, can come out and make a statement right. on how we feel and how our citizens feel. Um, and that should not impact us being able to get grants. That's the only, that's the only thing that I thought it's a, could happen. It's a good thought. It's a, good it's a valid thought. It would be, um, I think, unusual for a town to be penalized for just making a statement. Right. If we passed an ordinance or put a law on our books that went against the state, in the state legislature, then we might have some issues. Right. But making a statement, I don't believe it would. And even though we are one of few cities or towns that have taken this stance, a lot of the counties have. Right. Um, Mark sent me, Trustee Strickland sent me a copy of Morgan County's letter. Um, they were not even as strong as some of the other counties coming out with a resolution. They just had a letter of opposition, which is, you know, a level down, but it is making sure that their citizens understand that their elected officials um, do take a stance on some things. Yeah, I think that's the only thing uh, that the mayor wanted to make sure was, and it sounds like he's either talked with you or yes, you the trustees has. have. So just to make sure the language, and I think he liked it from a couple of these, but Canyon City being the first one, just where the whereas House Bill 19-1177, um, that language would be preferred to be in there. Uh, outside of that, I don't have any questions at this time based on what's on the resolution. And Trustee Strickland had talk to me as, as well about it. And what I will do is to redraft it, add those sections and present it to you at the regular meeting. And even there, if you want to tweak it some more, we can. And the police chief has no problem with he it? He has no problem. I talked with him about it as well after you uh, brought it up previously. And um, he did appreciate kind of taking the little bit of a lower road on the House Bill 1177 because it is a touchy issue. And really, as, as it's written, I think it's more the mental health assistance that people need to have as well. So, okay. um, but and I did speak about it. Okay. And I, uh, Trustee Miller, I will double check that with Melinda as far as right. there's She'll no know. risk. Yeah. And you think this would probably land at the July, what would that be, the July 28th session? Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, there's no time frame that we have to pass it but while it's hot on our minds we might as well take care of it i'm in support of it any any other comments are we good to get this going and make the minor modifications and then they'll end up on the agenda two weeks from now. Yep. Okay. okay. Right. That sounds good. Great. Uh, we are, when we think about the estimated time that we have listed here, we're kind of whipping through I it a little never, bit. Um, never done. I, I just jinxed it. I jinxed it, didn't I? This is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get your agenda now. We'll take two hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, that's what happened the last work session is I think we like quadrupled the time in the future agenda topics. Because I wouldn't shut up. <laughs> It, the conversations are important. I appreciate the work sessions because these are the conversations we always struggled to have in the old format. So it's necessary to do this. Yeah. yeah. That being said, now let's see if we did jinx ourselves. Item number four, other items and updates. You know, it's been so busy with the fourth. I don't have a lot this time. I will say 
Um, I continue to work with USDA and Diamondback Engineering on both the water and the wastewater projects. I hope to have some solid plans in the next month or so um, as we uh, make some final recommendations and request to CDHE on how we're going to discharge and things of that nature so that Diamondback can complete their PER amendment and we can start moving forward. But we still need to coordinate with Leonard Grice engineers on how we're going to discharge. We've done some comparisons on costs between a wastewater treatment plant that may discharge the surface water versus the cost of one that would go to groundwater. The limits are different and the treatment te technology is different between those two. And we're trying to make a balance between saving money now and does it save us money down the road or cost us money down the road from a water rights issue? Because they're so interdependent here in Wiggins. Uh, we just can't say do this with one and it's not gonna impact the other. That's not the truth in Wiggins. So we're having those discussions. Um, everything appears to be good with USDA as far as timing still. As long as we keep moving forward with our plans, um, we're confident we can meet the contract uh, timeframes that USDA had put on us originally. Um, so uh, things on that front are still moving forward. It's one of my, two of my top priorities of water and wastewater, of course. Um, so we've been talking about that. The only other update is um, we were accepted as a Main Street affiliate. All right. So, All right. Uh, there are some things coming up on that. So that's going to become a little bit higher priority because there's some trainings and some education that both Kristen and I, uh, she's going to be my cohort on that. I may be wrapping in the board members. I know uh, Mayor Pro Tem David uh, Hertzman has uh, expressed interest in helping out. So I think it'd be good to have um, some non-staff members helping to lead that community members. Um, I hope to, uh, as we go further, introduce that with the Business Alliance as well, make sure they're aware of it. Um, and um, just starting to look Think about budget for 2022. Um, you will likely have an audit presentation at the end of the month uh, because we're getting close to having the final draft of the audit, or we've got the final draft to have the final of the audit. Um, if you'll recall, I mentioned I may be bringing a couple of budget amendments to you to consider that we should have done as a part of uh, the end of the year on 2020 that the auditor has suggested and I'm going to bring those to you at the end of the month as well. Um, but it's so, so the audit is complete. Yes. This is the first time. First time that it has not ever that it's ever been complete before December 15th. I want to say it's complete from the standpoint that it's in draft form. You'll see it as draft form, but we're really close to finalizing it. We're doing, Lorraine is doing some, some double checks on some how some numbers were allocated or associated by the auditor. Deb and her crew were very helpful and instrumental, instrumental in getting the auditor the information they needed on time. So, but, uh, I'm confident we're going to be able to give it to the state at the end of July, like we're supposed to. So, um, and then the last update I need to give you is uh, we're down an officer. Officer Jupp has uh, parted ways with us. Um, mm. So uh, the chief has had several people already asking him and has over the last year about coming to work in Wiggins. So we're confident we're going to be able to attract um, a good pool of candidates. But we wish 
uh, Officer Jeff the best in uh, success on, as he uh, seeks other opportunities. Uh, has that uh, been posted in any way? Does the community know about that minus you just telling us this evening? It just happened. It just happened. Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, getting another officer is going to be a huge aspect. So excited about that process. We'll have to get that thing going. Um, that's really the only other items and updates I had. Um, if you want, I can get roll right into uh, future agenda topics. Um, I'm going to be re I'd like to reach out to each of the board members individually uh, to talk a little bit about water and what you would like to really know. Uh, when I bring this back in August or September, I want to be able to answer the questions that you've had in the back of your mind. And I think one of the best ways for me to gather that information is to have some one on one meetings with you as trustees so that I can uh, either have the experts here or gather the information so that I'm providing you the information that you would like to have that you may have been wondering about or don't quite understand as we're moving forward. I don't want to stop or move backwards, but I want to make sure I'm giving you all the information as we continue to move forward. And some of the ideas that I have as I've been through a hot summer in Wiggins and seen how things function. Um, and as we continue to grow, um, I think it's important that um, for many reasons, we tie down some of the schedules. And unfortunately, I can't yet until I get a little bit further with USDA, um, but we need to tie it down and need to start talking about the next phase of the development uh, down at uh, County Road P and Main Street. And, Main Street. Um, and do we put that on the ballot in November and having our information together as we move forward so that people are confident that we can move forward with that and have the infrastructure in place. But I'd like to have those discussions with you and then bring it back in an open session, another study session, just on water. Something I would like to know, and we've been working on it since January, on our feasibility study for our, our boost in our, in our, uh, our right tap study. fees. Right study. Um, I am inspect, in, expecting that fairly soon. Chris and I worked at the end of June to get some final data together and took some best um, stabs at the cost of future improvements. Uh, we were waiting on, if you recall, is waiting on more solid numbers on the wastewater treatment and the water tower. Um, I was able to work with Diamond back and uh, get some round numbers that we could put in the model. And Chris uh, was taking that and trying to finalize the model and was going to provide a, it's going to provide a report and recommendation to me. He's off on maternity leave for six weeks or so, but he's was telling me he was um, looking at it and trying to get it complete um, as he could by the end of last month. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's gonna be coming to us in, in uh, I would say in the coming month, month and a half. That's all I have. Um, I, I think the only thing I can really say to that is between that and kind of the timeline for the water project, you know, if we're going to put something on the ballot in November. We've, we've been talking about having an honest platform where we're given the facts. Where are we? Where are we going? And making sure that information is available. And so I think, I mean, obviously we'll talk about that. We go one right. on one, but um, I think by the time we get to September, it's got to be out there. Right. We have to come to an agreement that if we're going to put something on the ballot, that we need to give the facts on rates. We need to give the facts on where we're at in water and, and have some type of clue on a timeline. 
otherwise we're 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 going to appear like we're holding information back and and i know you're i know we're working as hard as we are like i really do i get it but i don't want to fall victim to the very thing that we've fallen victim to as a town for decades so we just got to get it <laughs> otherwise it's not going to be the right time well i think the water project is the most important thing right yeah. now i mean if we put an ro system up here which they're talking about right we have got all kinds of water underneath us and granted there, there's a, there's a lot of details on what are you going to do with the waste what are you going to do with this but this is free water underneath us we don't have to augmentate that correct um there's some additional treatment of course but you're you're right on that, Trustee Miller. Um, I want to emphasize more for the public. We have plenty of water. Um, we need really improvements in the infrastructure. Is that get, with Castle Rock, though, Tom? No, that's. I would say yes, it's with Castle Rock. But our augmentation supplies that we're working on, like the Knievel project, is to replace that Castle Rock water. Um, because the engineers have told me, and I've looked at the data, we've got water for the next 50 plus years for anticipated growth in Wiggins. It's the infrastructure we need to get improved. Um, you know, you have to continue always work to have redundant water supplies and things of that nature. And likewise, we need to have redundant infrastructure as well. Right now, we've got one pipeline, you know, from the South Platte into town. Ideally, in the future, we would have a couple of different ways of getting water sources to Wiggins. Using the Kiowa Bijou Basin Wells is another alternative water source it may not be enough for everything all the time but at least when you look at all the different options that we have it gives you that flexibility that, or we can use it for irrigating the ball fields yeah. doing things of that nature i'm looking into that as well on what it could be done what it would take to do that because why treat water to put back on the ground Makes sense to me. Oh, well, not, not to mention too, from the the safety standpoint with the fire flows. I mean, you got to have the storage tank. Right. We have a major fire, like we've said in the there, past. That we're, is, we got to get we're, the tank. We're hurting, so yeah. we got to get the tank. Well, the small incremental improvements that we've done, like replacing the impeller in the one of the booster station pumps, has been really a a. Uh, I'm going to use the term lifesaver this year and Bo and I are talking about looking at the other impeller um, to really increase the flows in the at the booster station and that's helped a lot in this situation I haven't heard anybody complaining about no water pressure and this is the first year I've never nobody's ever what's wrong with our water what's wrong with our water <laughs> well I don't think they I don't know if they didn't know how to, how to turn the valves up or what, but nobody, no, nobody is complaining about water pressure right now. And it, I would attribute that to Bo and what he's doing to make this system work. Um, we are producing a lot more water than we have in the past in this citizens are using a lot more water but we've grown um, so we're really paying attention to that and putting the new impeller and doing the small improvements we've done have really has really helped us we've got a long ways to go though those lines i'm oh, sorry go ahead okay i was going to say those lines i mean i i ended up being biased because i live where i do but um, obviously we still got to stay true to some of those projects, including the lines underneath the roads, because 
uh, having a bigger line will really help us out, on, at least on our side of town, for those who know that issue. I agree. I haven't heard much either, but we're not at the desired area we want to be yet. Right. We got a ways to go. Yeah. I, I think there might be some value to in putting something out in the Lost Creek Guide or the Fort Morgan Times, maybe with the, where we're at with our state of water. Because I, I think we all still hear it every day from yep. people that Wiggins has no water. Yep. And that's really not the case. You know, it's, it's more the infrastructure than the supply. Right. So, you know, that might be worth educating people too, because I think there is still that stigma that's out there. That Right. Uh, now, I agree. And I reiterated the fact that we've got a supply we've got good supply uh, even at the business alliance meeting on tuesday to remind folks so See if we had more storage yeah. that, that would help us a yeah. lot where where does the water tower fall within the project realistically i mean that's going to be a big question for phase people one, it, it? is that phase one? one yeah it's in phase one yeah i mean in yeah, because that, that I mean, talk about making a statement. Mm -hmm. That's what needs to be broadcast is when we get far enough, the fact that boom, there's going to be a tower. Those transmission pumps are running 24 hours a day, trying to keep keep water coming into the yeah. Tower. And yeah. and when when it does slow down, you know the the U seat, we get a bunch of rain or something, our tank fills up, they shut off. Yeah. We had another tank, that then we got some backup. Water. Yep, yep. Uh, that's. Yeah. The other tank is needed for a couple of reasons. Gives us the supply and storage we need. We all know that. It's going to give us redundancy if we have to take one tank down. We'll have two. When you do a take, in, take inspection, you don't have to take both of them down. You just take one down at a time, mm -hmm. schedule. Right. Um, so there's a lot. The water project, yes, it's going to be expensive. But it's going to give us a lot of redundancy and improvements that the town has been needing. Tom, I know, I know at one time there was talks of, I think there was another municipality that had a tank that they were going to give us. I, I think there was cost, obviously, associated with moving that, but is that still... Early in, early in my tenure here, I heard about that, but the tank wasn't tall enough. Yeah, it was a <clears throat> Morgan Heights, I yeah. think, was the one that we were trying to get it from and by the golf course. You're the risk of right. moving it and it not being usable was going to be all, all on us. So we could have bought a tank, moved a tank, and not had mm -hmm. a tank. And I didn't right. want to recommend that risk. Okay. Um, I thought I had a lead on a used tank that was would have been almost the price of scrap steel, but it's not as large as we need. It was like fifth of what we need mm -hmm. um, so but i'm starting to keep my eye out on stuff like that that might either help us you know in the interim or help us in the future as we're trying to save cost you know because a tank of the size we need is going to have to be dismantled or built on site and, re and rebuilt and built right. on site then you have to sandblast it then you have to coat it, then you have to paint it. So it's a year long process. And epoxy paint yep. is very, very expensive. Yep. So um, more to come after I talk with you on one on one, and then we'll have another work session okay. as I gather my notes uh, from talking cool. with each other. Yeah. The, the only thing I don't understand is. Uh, to me, that that tank, since they want the elevation on it, that would just be gravity flow to our existing pump station. So we wouldn't need to have anything, any pumps at that tank. That would just at least gravity to get it out. We need to have the pumps to get it in. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You got a booster, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one other, up, I guess not, it should have been updates, is Hope is working on the new website. Um, she and I have been um, attending a couple of uh, trainings. She's pulling the bulk of the rate of the weight, um, but I'm sitting in as well so that I can 
uh, help out if I need to and without having to shuffle things back and forth. But uh, we're trying to stand it up in about the next month. It will be a continue improvement as we go on, but trying to get the basics of our current site up and running in uh, sometime in August. And let's okay. see, what else can I tell you? Not to for long, uh, Invoice Cloud, I think we're getting some of the bugs worked out on that. I think people are signing up for some of the auto pay and things of that nature. You need to check with Joanne as the second month of billing, you know, we're getting ready and to see if we see a good increase. They're using the new um, Neptune reading system. They were able to do the entire Kiowa Park subdivision in about 20 minutes with the new uh, equipment for Neptune and having the radio feeds on the meters. So what used to take about three days once I get the bugs worked out and Bowen, uh, Joey stopped deleting stuff off the pad um, inadvertently, but uh, we should be able to cut down what used to do be done in three days to where it's done in maybe a half a day. Has, has there been any feedback or concern on the new fees with cloud since they're a little higher? Some people don't like it because it's higher. It's a buck higher than what the other ones were. I think the fees before were like three ninety five, and it's four ninety five now. So close to that. If you do auto pay out of your checking account, it's one ninety five. So I think it's educating people on what their options are. But I think overall people are embracing it. I just don't have the numbers yet. Deb, have you heard? the conversion rate of people going auto pay or using the new system? No, I just, I think we've had like 40 complaints about the cost. Yeah. But I think, I think it only used to be a dollar if you did pay by check. Yeah. I think it was a dollar because that's how I usually pay mine. Right. I don't know. Check, but I don't know what the, yeah. what the current is now. It's hard. Sometimes convenience costs money, though. Sure. I mean, it's just, it's, I, I, so I get the complaints, especially if you're used to doing it the other way, right. but that's still an option. Right. You can always talk. <laughs> well, and the decision was made that we don't want to put the burden on all the rate payers, only those that want to use the service. And I think that's the right thing to do yeah. because not everyone wants that. And we recognize that. It's giving them the choice. It's called a paper trail, Tom. <laughs> I think I mean, the younger people are more willing to do that. There's, they, you know, convenience to them is nothing. Right. Where the older people are like, that's too much money. I'm not spending that on that, you know. Well, that, that don't bother me. And it's the same at the county. If you buy your tags and use a credit card. That's right. You get the same convenience fee charge. And the state passed a bill recently of merchants can now charge you for using a credit card at their store up to a certain percentage of the uh, value of the cost. So that'll be interesting to see if uh, the old style, I remember my dad would offer someone cash if they take 3% off his bill because he was paying cash. And if they said no, he'd give him his credit card because he knew the credit card company charged him 3% at that time. Steps does that if you use a debit card or check, it's three percent less than if you or three yeah. sets, it three sets. Less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yeah. it's our society. Is there any updates on Robert's 81 or anything new? Um, mm -hmm. all the last I heard, and they they had a meeting Monday, and I haven't heard <laughs> out when, but they were still looking and talking to investors. I've talked to their engineer. They're getting me um, a request for a can serve letter, and I've asked them for uh, specifics on the flows that might be coming in. Um, I did reiterate, and they understand that 
we couldn't have annexed them if we weren't able to serve them. Um, but I think it goes back to the old time rumors of we don't have enough water and mm -hmm. people want to be assured of that. So. <laughs> Did they give a potential timeline uh, a, that could potentially get the project rolling or not really? They haven't yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about the farm? Looks like, uh, I, you might not know more than probably I, I might at this point, just because I heard it on the fourth from two Valley, but, um, I know they put the lots up for sale and like a day later we took the sign back down. So I'd like to think that's promising, but I heard sort of a rumor that sidewalk was going in. Uh, they were going to put curb and gutter in next. I don't know if you've heard anything about timelines to get that going. I have not. I need to connect with them. And typically, I see curb and gutter first, then road, yeah. then sidewalks. So it kind of depends on how they're sequencing. But from my knowledge, I think they've uh, the impression I have from the sign going down is they probably sold the available lots that they had. Yeah. Yeah, they had utilities being marked out there today. Yeah, so it's about time to go, I think, for them. So that's good to see. Yep. You getting more pushback on our parking lines? No, I have not had any. <laughs> You've had pushback on the parking yeah, lines? Any pushback? No. no. Especially at the park. It's it's nice having them there because people park the way they're supposed to and you fit more cars in yeah. there because you don't have some parking left, some parking right. I do still see some cars on Bates Street mm -hmm. parking straight in. <laughs> People are using, yeah, are using lights. I joked with Bo that I could have been honorary and had back in angle parking. <laughs> well, we might, have, might have put a sign up diagonal parking only. Yeah. So no feedback from the businesses or anything either? Had had no okay. complaints. Okay. We've only needed it for <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to put the ass all down first. The pit of the that's that's right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so. so I take no complaints as a good No, that's usually how it goes. It dresses up the town a little bit. It does. We still have some work to do putting in some handicap signs, adding a couple of handicap spaces, stuff of that nature, but it's a start. It's the best thing. It's the best thing I've seen for a long time. <laughs> it is amazing just painting the lines, how it, it did dress it up. Yeah. It made it look different. So. Yeah. It don't look like a cow town no more. <laughs> well, I guess it's a water-based paint, so it's not going to be there very long. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's cheap. You can go right over. <laughs> don't, even have, don't even have to lay them out. No, you know, they're laid out. <laughs> and they're wide spaces. Mm -hmm. That's what's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. That's all I had. Any, any other updates from the board or even just the future agenda topics that they want on there. I think the water thing was probably the, water most, the biggest. biggest one. Not hearing any. Uh, so I see no more agenda items on tonight's agenda. So we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting at this time. Uh, it is 7.55 on mine, 7.54 up there. Whatever we count. That's it. Right. Great. Thank you all. Sounds good. All right, cool. Uh, maybe I'll give this to Deb.